How are you feeling? You got John Riggs here, and I love my Nintendo Switch. Even though I grabbed the PlayStation 5, I have the Xbox Series S, and I play my Oculus Quest 2 daily, I still get a lot of play out of my Nintendo Switch, especially with conventions opening up later on this year. It is my travel system of choice. It's been a while since I've done one of these. I'm going to show off 11 games that I've been playing recently on my Nintendo Switch. Some of them that look like old Nintendo games. We got some of them that are just fun to pick up and play for a couple, you know, a couple levels or something like that. There's one game that looks and plays like a fever dream. <laughs> You'll see what I'm talking about uh, later on in this video. Before we get to the games, I gotta show you my game changer when it comes to gaming on the go with my Nintendo Switch. This is the Fixture S1. It is a pro controller mount for your Nintendo Switch. And this thing is super sweet. Now again, as much as I love my Nintendo Switch as my travel system of choice, it's not the most to me, most comfortable system in the world. Plays great, you get used to it, but the buttons are too small. I'd rather game on an actual proper controller, you know what I mean? My favorite thing about this mount is it doesn't use the Joy-Cons. I know it's upside down, but this thing is optimized to slide right into place, and then with this, you can put this exactly where you want it. So if you want to hold it like this, that's fine. You want to hold it back here and have it angled like that, that's fine too. People ask about the weight of this thing with the controller along with the device and then the switch itself. Well, yeah, if you're playing it like this, it's gonna feel a little heavy, you know, but when I'm sitting down, I was playing it just on the couch with my arms resting on my lap like this, you know, my wrists were fine. I didn't notice anything wrong with it at all. Now, to be fair, I did have it kind of like this to help it balance out a little bit better. You can put it exactly where you want it. It's all good. When you see me flying to conventions later on this year, you're going to see me gaming on one of these. I mean, they literally even have a carrying case to make it super safe that goes with your Switch and your controller, as well as some games you can throw in there too. This thing, I mean, come on, man. And if you want one of these, but don't have a pro controller, but you do have like a third party controller, I'm using the KMD and it fits in there just fine. It's a little loose because it's optimized for the pro, but this does work pretty well just like this. So I think you'll be all right. If you want to grab yours, I got an affiliate link in the description as well as the pinned comment. This video is made possible because of them as this video sponsor. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. Let's go over some of the games that look like Nintendo games. I'm all about that. This is Eternum EX. Looks kind of like a Ghost and Goblins. Sounds like a Ghost and Goblins. Is this Ghost and Goblins? <laughs> no, no, it's not. Um, kind of a fun old school uh, classic puzzle platformer style game. Collect all the treasure chests. That's what you gotta do. Watch out for the bad guys. You can defeat the bad guys if you want. Collect all the treasure chests and then go through that weird mystical gate in the middle of at least this first stage anyway. And as you can imagine, more obstacles along the way, more enemies along the way, more ways to collect chests on the way too. Sometimes there's like like these chests here. You have to like bump them from underneath to basically unlock them and then you can grab them. I kind of like games like this. When I saw Eternity X, I had to check it out. And although I have this digitally, there is a physical version coming out sometime soon too. That's pretty neat. Halloween Forever now available on the Nintendo Switch. The great thing about Halloween Forever is, doesn't matter what time of year it is, it's always time for Halloween. This game, cute, fun, <laughs> I love it. You play as this kind of jack-o'-lantern guy, and you spit out candy corns as your primary weapon. Now you can pick up costumes along the way as well to have like a Santa outfit and stuff like that too. There's other costumes you can unlock while you play this game throughout this game. You will die a lot in this game, even though you have a health bar and everything, but there's also an option for 99 lives. So if you just want to go through it and just, you know, go through the motions, it's available for you. It's what I love about this. It's like the perfect difficulty, but still you just want to play the game, enjoy the game. They give you that option right up front. If you want to give yourself a challenge, man, just make it three lives. And I mean, you can go from there if you'd like. Plenty of bosses in this game too. The bosses have a pattern and I mean, I think all the bosses are fun as well. And that's always important. You don't want to dread going to a boss saying, oh, this, this is going to be, this is going to be a headache. No, it's like you see the boss, you're like, oh, cool. Okay, I get it. And then once you figure it out, you can you know defeat him and move on. Halloween Forever, super fun. Now here's a cool looking game. This is called Golden Force. I know I said Nintendo games, but I could have seen this as like a Super Nintendo game, maybe even like a uh, pixel based, like a you know, PlayStation 1, Sega Saturn style game. It still plays with that 2D hack and slash, pick up the coins, defeat the bad guys. Big colors, big bad guys. Ooh, creepy bad guys. <laughs> and Golden Force, right up your alley. Hey, you know what? Whatever floats your boat, you know what I'm saying? Because you're in the water? All right. Along with games that play like NES games, I'm a huge fan of games that are narrative driven, and this is what comes after. I was intrigued by what comes after because it was made by the guy who does Coffee Talk, and I was such a big fan of Coffee Talk, I had to check this game out. So without spoiling too much, you play as this girl. I'd like to thank everyone in the game for wearing their mask. 
But when you fall asleep on the train and you wake up, you realize that you're kind of in the afterlife train. Like, the train going somewhere, and everyone's ghosts on this train. You're figuring out, like, why are you there? What's going on? What's happening? You know, you're second-guessing yourself. You can talk to the passengers, um, and then in doing so, you learn a little bit more about them. It deals with some issues that I think are super important to deal with, you know, about depression and stuff like that. Um, nice to play through a game like this. Not a long adventure. I mean, I was able to play it from start to finish in one sitting. Experience that I absolutely loved. What comes after? If you're into those kind of narrative-driven games, well, I mean, even Coffee Talk was like a half-an-hour game when you skip through all the dialogue. Um, I mean, yeah, it's, to me, totally worth it. One of my most favorite games from last year from the Nintendo Switch was Half Past Fate, and I'm not making that up. I was a huge fan of Half Past Fate. This is kind of a side story. This is called Romantic Distancing. Now, when the game starts out, you, you know, go to the store, you, you start talking to someone, you make a connection, and then, hey, you know, you're gonna set up to, you know, maybe start hanging out a little bit more, maybe start dating and all that. Well, that was right when 2020 hit, if you know what I mean. So now they're trying to do the social distance dating and the struggles of going through that. And you have to go through the motions of like, you know, I wanna meet up, but we can't, but we shouldn't, but let me play you some music and, you know, this sucks. And that's what a lot of us went through um, this, this past year. I know things are starting to open up now and uh, we're getting closer, we're getting closer as we speak. Um, but, you know, in the meantime, this game kind of went through that story of what it was like to probably date uh, in that year, last year. But this one's a quicker experience. Uh, you can play it in one sitting, just like the other game. Um, and I thought it was a lot of fun. And I thought it was cute, and it was exactly what I needed at that moment. All right, I don't want to bring you down anymore. Let's talk about Bob Help Them, helping out your fellow man here. Now, although games where you have to gather a bunch of tools and items, not my style of game, this one plays a lot quicker and a lot more fun. And there's, you know, something going on with this game that I definitely um, wanted to bring this up in this video. So, yeah, kind of same idea. Somebody says, I need this many things to do this. Well, you do that by running around, you're, you're timed, you're timed in this whole area, and you have to just grab as many as you can and drop them off, and then you'll go someone else and talk to someone else, and you have to do something else over here, and uh, you're just running around all over the place because you ought to help everyone, and that's gonna be <laughs> the, the end of me <laughs> by trying to help everyone. I feel a little bit of myself in Bob with Bob Help Them, but still, I had some fun with this game. Uh, my kids liked it as well, and, you know, it's, you know, as you can see from the graphics, we can see from the gameplay, it's just kind of like that. You're just, you know, doing as much as you can in the limited amount of time that you have. Because all the good names were taken, this game is called Jumping Stack Ball. Well, as lame as the title of this game sounds, I cannot tell you how addicted to this game I am. You're a ball that bounces in place, and when you hold your button down, you break through the cushiony part of the barrier. Not the black part, but the colored part, where you um, will work your way all the way down. You hold all, The longer you hold it down, the more momentum you'll build up and everything. And you just want to clear off all these things all at once and get to the very bottom without going through the black part. If you try to do that, your ball will shatter. However, if you build up enough momentum, you can go through the black part and crush through it. But you gotta keep your eye on that momentum meter because once it goes out, then you know you might be stuck and you might disintegrate again. I can't tell you how many stages there are, but I can tell you that I played this game a bunch and I'm still seeing new stages and new patterns as I'm playing this game. Again, it may not look like much, but man, is it addicting. Man, is it fun. Jumping stack ball of all games. I believe it's pronounced Columno. Columno? Columno. Sure, why not? It may look a kind of like Jumping Stack Ball I just showed you, but this is a little different. When you hit the button, your marble moves off the edge and into the hole below. That's all it is. But then there's other obstacles in the way that might make it so your ball will, you know, fall off or get tinked off the side there. My kids used to watch these videos that are like, you know, oddly satisfying or specifically satisfying. I forgot the term uh, on YouTube. And this game reminds me a lot like that, where it's just like, it's just very satisfying when you hit the button and it goes through, like all the things are moving around and everything, but it goes right through. I love it. Great. You can get like little uh, abilities later on too, where like, you know, for instance, you can drop down and then freeze yourself just for a moment and then it'll drop down the rest of the way. So there's other abilities you can get later on in this game. There's more to it than that, but I'll just show you this much anyway. This game is called Stealth. I would imagine if they had Metal Gear Solid on the Atari 2600, it would look like this. You have to, I mean, I can, you already know how to play this game just by looking at it, I'm sure. Pick up all the items and leave, but you can see the peripheral vision of the, uh, of the enemy. Just avoid it, that's all you gotta do. 
just avoid it and just move on. Lots of stages you can play through in this one. You can kind of knock out the people by being close to them. You can hit your button. I mean, that's only if you need to, really. But I did like Metal Gear, so I had to check out Stealth as well. You know, it's funny, so many people are always like, oh, it's all about the graphics, it's all about this, it's all about that, and here I am playing what are basically mobile games <laughs> on my Nintendo Switch. I love it. How about Paco Caravan? You know games like Snake, of course, Nibbler would be included in that as well if you're an old-school arcade gamer like I am. Well, it's that, basically. You're in a car in the parking lot, and when you pick up these other cars, they just become part of your train, your tail. And if it gets too long and you can't move out of the way in time, well, then it's game over for you. I feel like I need to turn better, but I had to at least check out Paco Caravan. This game is called Puss, is made by Team Coil. This game is the game I was talking about that kind of plays and looks like a fever dream. I mean, you play as this cat head going through these walls. If you get too close, it gets all staticky. And just the graphics, the backgrounds, the visuals, the stages are just kind of weird. Just go through the maze and go through the exit. However, if you touch the walls or get too close to the walls or whatever, it starts getting that staticky thing. And then when it does, it's game over. And then you try again and try again and keep going. The game is called Puss, and it's available now for the Nintendo Switch. And it's a, it's a fever dream. It's the best way I can explain it. You made it this far, but do you dare clock on this video? It might be right up your alley. This one, too. I've covered a lot of great Nintendo eShop games uh, on this channel in the past, and they all stand up to... I mean, they're not right if they're new or not. These ones are newer, for sure. Uh, but I have other ones as well that, you know, maybe you haven't heard of them yet. And you go back on them, add them to your wish list. Maybe you'll find them 99 cents. I mean, so many great games for the Nintendo Switch, and I thank you for watching. And I will do more of these videos in the near future.